How can self-discharge be measured in lithium-ion cells? In this video, we will look at one method of measuring or testing cells for self-discharge. We will look at another method of testing in a subsequent video. As we discussed in a prior video, self-discharge of an electrical cell is the loss of charge over time while the cell is not connected to any load. In other words, cells will gradually discharge even when they're not connected to anything. Using a simple electrical model of a cell, we also showed how the self-discharge phenomenon can be modeled as a resistance, R sub SD, in parallel with the effective capacitance of the cell. In this model, this self-discharge resistance is typically in the range of tens or hundreds of kiloohms. When nothing is connected to the cell, an open circuit condition, the effective capacitance discharges through the high value R sub SD, generating a current, I sub D, that can range between a few microamps to a few hundred microamps, depending on cell size. This is the self-discharge current. Over weeks or months, this self-discharge path depletes the stored charge of the cell, thus causing the cell voltage to very gradually decrease. Two of the methods for measuring self-discharge are the open circuit voltage, or OCV method, and the potentiostatic method. In this video, we will look at the OCV method. Traditionally, self-discharge is evaluated by measuring the decrease in a cell's open circuit voltage, or OCV, over time. A high accuracy, high resolution voltmeter is required to measure the cell's voltage loss over an extended period. The amount the open circuit voltage of the cell, or OCV, changes over time is an indicator of how much the cell's state of charge, or SOC, changes due to self-discharge. And since most lithium-ion cells have very little change in OCV as the cells discharge, it takes a long time to see changes in the state of charge of the cells. One of the complications of the OCV method is that the absolute voltage and the rate of voltage change per unit time varies considerably depending on the cell's exact state of charge. The decrease of a cell's OCV over time is an indirect and imprecise indicator of what the cell's self-discharge rate is. While it is not technically challenging to measure a cell's OCV, the primary drawback with this method is that it is very time-consuming. Because lithium-ion cells have very little change in OCV as they discharge, it takes at least several days and commonly weeks or months to detect a significant loss of a cell's state of charge using the OCV method. This long test time has some significant implications. If you're measuring self-discharge this way as part of the cell design process, or if you're testing cells to evaluate them for use in your electronic equipment design, the long test cycles lengthen your design iterations, which impacts your time to market. If you're measuring self-discharge via the OCV method in cell manufacturing, the long test cycles directly increase the amount of work in process inventory and the facility space for that inventory. The relatively long duration of the OCV test method creates some additional issues. You will want the cell's voltage to change only because of loss of charge due to self-discharge. However, the voltage of lithium-ion cells varies in a complex manner with cell temperature. You ideally need to hold your cells at constant temperature for the duration of the test, or you will need to run the test for a much longer duration so that the cell's OCV loss is much larger than the OCV variation due to temperature. And, Having a lot of cell inventory in a high volume manufacturing environment, especially for large high capacity cells, creates a potential safety risk that must be carefully managed. To summarize the OCV method, it is a relatively simple voltage measurement requiring a precision voltmeter. But there are issues that you need to be aware of. The OCV method commonly takes weeks or even months these long test cycles create some issues. Slower design iterations, slower time to market, higher inventory and facilities costs. 
Cells must be stored at constant temperature for longer periods. Higher risk due to energized cells being held in inventory. The second method of measuring lithium ion self-discharge that we will examine is the potentiostatic method. And that's what we will discuss in our next video in this series. Thanks for joining us today. For more information on self-discharge, go to www.keysite.com slash find slash self-discharge.